Hey guys, what's going on, man? Leo Pato here. You know what it is. Today's gonna be a, a cool video. I'm gonna be heading over to my client's uh, office right now. I'm gonna head over to their office, uh, dentist office, and uh, I gotta go look after their 125 gallon. It's a fresh water tank, it's not salt water. I've been looking after this tank for the last uh, at least two, three years now, and uh, it's nothing uh, crazy special. But, um, you know, I like it. I enjoy the tank. And uh, they have some really large uh, fish in there, some very large tinfoil barbs, and uh, some, some uh, algae eater, um, pleco. What else? They have some angel fish, um, some uh, grammies in there as well. Freshwater tank. It's an old tank, actually, at least a good uh, 12, 15 years old. I believe they told me this office has been there for a long time. So uh, it does have quite a bit of scratches. There's not really much I can do about that. Supposedly the dentist office is going to be moving uh, within the next year. So maybe we can squeeze in a brand new tank there at the new location if the owner's still interested in that. Along with uh, even maybe upgrading to a saltwater tank, that would be fantastic. I would love to look after that for uh, the dentist office owner at his new uh, office location. That would be a fantastic idea. So you know what? Uh, stay tuned guys. I'm going to be bringing you guys along the way. I have uh, just a, basically a quick basic water change. Just wanted to take you guys along the way. Um, I got to stop off, make a little pit stop. I got to grab some carbon and some uh, some fish food. I don't know how these guys use so much fish food. I, I visit the tank like every three weeks to four weeks and they just consume so much fish food. I have no idea what they're doing, but whatever. It's the same old story. I called them. They're ready for a service and um, I'm going to go pick up some fish food along with some carbon charcoal to replace the uh, filters. So come along with me guys, I've got quite a bit of work to do, nothing hard, nothing major, but just wanted to bring you guys along the way. You gotta be kidding me, they're closed. The fish store was closed <clears throat> to get the uh, fish food and the carbon I need for the tank servicing. So um, I'm just chilling out another like 10 15 minutes. Just grabbed a coffee, grabbed a bagel. I'm still kind of in sleeping mode. I'm a bit early. I forgot uh, this actually happened to me last time. I got here like. 10 minutes or so before they open so I had to like wait outside luckily today is uh, it is pretty cold but it is very nice and sunny and beautiful so I'm just chilling inside here the mall it's taking a seat relaxing grab my Bella nice coffee right here enjoy my cough and uh, that's it hopefully I actually win this roll up the winner that would be pretty sick and uh, I gotta go deal with the tank service, 125 freshwater tank, just sitting back. Gotta go grab some fish and carbon and uh, let you guys know what's going on, show you guys the tank, show you how big these tinfoil barbs are and uh, you know, see what I do for a regular uh, water change on this tank every like three to four weeks. Hopefully I got enough memory on my uh, camera so I can bring you guys along the way. Guys, I don't know if you guys tried this French toast before, from Tim Hortons here. It's called um, a specialty bagel. It's called maple cinnamon French toast. Wow. I've been hooked on these things for a while. So just double toast it, extra butter, along with a small double double, and I'm happy. If you haven't tried this bagel out, try it out. And if you guys have tried it, let me know what you guys think of it. Guys, I had to show you this, man. I walked by it, and it reminded me <clears throat> of a fish tank. So it's just a 
I guess a company here store just advertising their little display. But these little glass boxes remind me of a fish tank. Very nice, clean cut, bubbled edges. Top notch, nice little stand. All right, guys. Just looked at the time. Still got a ten more, ten more minutes. I'm just gonna come outside here and have a quick smoke. What else is new? Bad habit. Like I said, just bringing you guys along the way. Gorgeous Dale here, man. Look at this. I just came out of my igloo, Toronto, Canada. You know what it is. Bang, bang. But I love this place. Mint day. Look at that sky, man. Beautiful sky. Beautiful day. I should actually let's go over there by the sun. Forget about the shade. Mint out here. It's trying to stay warm. Anytime I'm outside of my igloo. For those of you guys that don't know. Yeah, right. Toronto igloo, my culo. Look at that sun. Bang, bang. Look at that. Is that in your eye or is it just in my eye? Oh my god. So that's what's up. This store needs to open up earlier for these uh, early birds. Now I'm uh, just getting a little bit impatient here. You guys are making me nervous. What a day. I love the sun, man. Such a beautiful thing. Where's my glasses? Freaking chink eye. There we go. Now we're grooving Leo Potts. You know what it does. So, yeah. I definitely owe you guys uh, an update on the 125, the coral reef tank, the overdose. Tell you guys briefly what's going on. All the corals dead. Besides like two anemones and two mushrooms. The anemones are super small. The mushrooms are doing okay. Oh, one bird's nest is actually okay. All the other corals are dead. I took out about 100 pounds of live rock out of the system. Uh, it's just sitting in the garage right now in a Rubbermaid container as I can't really put it outside to dry out. I'm going to probably pressure washer it and boil it in the springtime when it gets a little bit nicer outside and just let it dry out properly and maybe eventually introduce that back into the tank. All the fish are still alive in my tank. Again, all the corals, majority of them are all dead. The tank looks totally different. It's completely pretty much empty compared to how it was. I took out lots of live rock. I definitely owe you guys an update, so stay tuned for that. But today's video is gonna be, I guess, a wasting of time of getting here a little bit early to the fish store to pick up some material that I need, such as just the fish food and some carbon for the filter. But uh, I'm going to be showing you guys the 125 built into the wall at the uh, dentist office. It's a, it's a freshwater tank. Nothing crazy special, but I've been taking care of this tank, like I said earlier, for the last like two to three years on a like three week to four week uh, basis. So uh, I'm just going to finish having this butt and this coffee and I'll go inside there and get what I need to get. Well, guys, got some news to break it to you. First things first, my coffee cup here is a winner free coffee you know what it is that's the luck of the draw just walked out of the fish store got myself some carbon and some uh, food just uh, lock myself out of the truck here right now it's gonna unlock it get inside so yeah I got uh, some super duper cheap fish food it was like on clearance on sale it's actually technically uh, goldfish flake food uh, I've gotten this in the past for the uh, for the fish to eat and they've been eating it they're pretty much pigs and they'll eat anything and uh, so you know what for how much they're feeding and even though I told them not to even though I told them not to feed so much you know you can't uh, I don't really want to charge the price too much I start charging so much you know for fish food just alone right so I just wanted to get something cheaper the fish are still content they're still happy and uh, you know they're actually uh, they have some some years to them 
Um, like I said, the tinfoil barbs, I'm not even sure how many years some of them have. Some of them were in there longer than uh, even before I was servicing the tank. They had another gentleman servicing the tank. So they were in there before that and they were big. So I can only imagine how old these guys are. I added a few other small ones uh, like a year ago or actually like two years ago, give or take, when I first started servicing the tank. And they're, uh, they were super small. And now I'm going to consider them like medium size compared to the super large ones. Whatever. I'll be there in a couple minutes. Stay tuned, guys. Little pots, you know what it does. All right. Well, I just arrived here at the plaza where the dentist office is located. I'm going to bring you guys inside. Again, like I said, this tank is approximately 15 years old. This dentist's office has been here for a long time, and they're going to be soon to be moving, guys. So this is uh, the regular maintenance, the regular routine that uh, gets done every time I uh, service, uh, service this tank. Big cement in here. Yeah, looks good. You'll notice guys that I'll start first thing is by unplugging the filters. There's two aqua clear filters on this tank along with one power head and one heater. I will be leaving the heater on and I'll also be leaving the power head on. Next, you will notice I will be removing these glass lids. These glass lids are an aftermarket glass lids that I installed afterwards, as they had a few incidents of some fish jumping out of the tank. This is some scrap spare glass that I actually had kicking around, and it's actually much thicker than what I wanted to originally use, as you don't need thick glass for just the lid. Ideally, one eighth or quarter inch glass is thick enough as the glass that I have used is three eighths thick. I might eventually swap those glass lids out for some thinner glass lids which will be less weight above the aquarium and I can use those three eighths for another tank build. The three eighths thick glass. Next you will be looking at the guts of the filter. All the media and carbon and sponge and ammonia remover and bio balls as well. So once those are removed into the Rubbermaid container, I'm going to start cleaning the front glass and all the glass inside the aquarium with this brush here that is made for aquariums and I'm sure you can purchase one at your local fish shop. Coming around from the front of the tank, you can see me moving around having a blast in some fast motion cleaning up the tank. And uh, you'll also notice these tinfoil barbs, a few goldfish, 
a Pleco, some Grammys. You'll notice how much water is actually evaporated in this tank. This is approximately four weeks time since I was last here. So I'm going to give on average an estimate with this being a 125 gallon tank. There's about maybe four inches of water missing. I'm going to say that's at least a good 20 to 30 gallons of water that is evaporated within about four weeks time. The lids that I installed also help with the evaporation and as there is space for the oxygen and gas exchange. You'll also notice on the right hand side here this heater, the submergible heater. I removed it out of its bracket and just has it floating inside the tank to make sure that when I siphon out water for the water change it is not exposed to the air and is fully submerged in the water. So now I am ready to start siphoning out and cleaning the sand bed on this 125 gallon freshwater tank. I tend to start on one side of the tank and work my way through and start siphoning out as much as the debris that's within the sand bed. That same water that I'm siphoning out is going directly into this Rubbermaid container with all the filter media that is used on the filters. I'm going to be rinsing out that filter media inside the same bucket and also some I'll be rinsing in the sink which is located right behind me which is also very convenient to have as that is the water that I'm going to be using directly from the tap into this freshwater tank for this water change. So if we can do the math briefly, as I said, there is approximately, call it 25 gallons, 30 gallons of water that is evaporated. Now I'm going to be siphoning out approximately another 15 to 20 gallons. So in total, I'll be doing close to about 40 to 50 gallons, replacing back into this tank after this water change has been done. As I mentioned, I'm going to be using tap water directly from the tap. A few things I want to make sure is that I use a water conditioner that removes any chlorine and other ammonias and whatnot that are within the water from the tap water. I'm going to be using a prime chemical that removes those elements from the water. That water conditioner and prime that I'm going to be using it is very concentrate so you don't need much at all and I usually use about two capfuls approximately which I normally place in front of the power head. So one is ammonia and one is activated carbon both in bags gonna put one in one filter one in the other filter. Right now we're pumping in water from the uh, tap right here directly into the tank and I'm going to be adding some prime, some water conditioner. There's the water right here, just trying to get it to roughly the same temperature. Just wedge it in there underneath the filter. And uh, that's pretty much it. Just going to give these guys a rinse shortly and then turn back on the filters. You will notice that the older media that was previously there in the filter has now been rinsed out and installed back into the filter. So as we are waiting for the tank to fill up, I'm rinsing out the new filter media, which is the carbon and ammonia remover that I'm going to be placing back inside the filter. Next, I will be installing this pipe, which is for the filter, which is sucks in the water from the main display tank inside the filter. Next, I'm going to be adding 
a few caps in front of the power head of this prime water conditioner that removes the bad elements within tap water. It is very concentrate, so use as directed on the bottle. As the tank is filling up with water, I also noticed a few spots on the sand bed that I would like to thoroughly clean a little bit better. And instead of using the big siphon, which I normally did a few minutes ago previously, I am just using a half inch hose and siphoning it down into the Rubbermaid container, as this method is a little bit easier, or should I say much easier, to focus in a specific spot and at the same time not drain too much water. Now I am ready to, to plug back in the filter and let it start running. First things first, you want to be sure that the filter has water and it is not running dry. You'll also notice that there is about 3 inches to 2 inches give or take of water that still needs to be filled within the aquarium. The filter is plugged in right now and it is slowly starting to overflow like a waterfall back inside the tank. As the water in the tank fills up, the flow on the filter will also pick up. Be sure to not, to not start your filter dry with no water in it and also make sure that the water level in your tank is high enough or else the filter pump will struggle to start sucking the water via that pipe that I just finished installing. So now that this second filter on the left side here of the tank is plugged in, I'm just playing around here with the suction via the pump and that pipe, the little adjustment to get it to prime and start itself. As you can see, the tank now is almost full. Maybe these fish are uh, hungry, or uh, I'm not sure, but they're coming close to the top of the water, and uh, they're obviously noticing me, maybe even saying thank you or goodbye. Well, guys, it looks like this uh, tank service is pretty much all complete. Just sit back and relax a little bit. I still have to uh, clean the front glass, which I'm going to be using some paper towel and some vinegar spray, some white vinegar. And uh, for the most part, that's a wrap on this 15 year old, 125 gallon freshwater fish tank that's built into the wall here in this office. I've been a privilege to service this tank for the last three years approximately, and I've definitely taken have taken extreme care into this tank and have definitely enjoyed taking care of it. This is the regular maintenance that I do on this tank every three to four weeks. You're pretty much looking at it. I haven't added many fish in at least over maybe a year. A few fish were donated actually by some uh, some clients of the uh, dentist office which was really nice some of the goldfish and whatnot this is a community tank want to have as less aggression as possible and uh, I'm just wrapping up here wiping down the glass that I took off earlier that's one extra maintenance thing that needs to be done with this tank is cleaning those glass lids so the light does penetrate that looks like a wrap guys. Thank you very much for watching. Leo Pozzo TV. This is the freshwater tank service of a 15 year old freshwater tank. Thank you very much for watching. I wanted to bring you guys along the way. It's definitely a super long, ridiculously long video, but it is what it is. And I wanted you guys to learn something along the way. Thank you very much. Go ahead and subscribe right now. And we'll see you guys till next time. Leo Pozzo TV, you know what it is.